Hello guys, this is Karthik from AzureAutomation.com and this is part 12 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part we can talk about setting environment ready for XAML builds in Team Foundation Server 2015. So before watching this part I would request you to watch part 11 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So let's get started. XAML builds in Team Foundation Server 2015. So to run a XAML build, we need to have a build controller and build agent as we already discussed in our previous video of this particular video series. And how to install it? Well, installation can be done fairly very easily with the Team Foundation Server Administration Console as uh, shown uh, below. And this is the console you will have with the Team Foundation Server Administration Console and where you can register your uh, build controller and also you can create build agents so you can create multiple agents uh, depend upon your load and you can also register those agents with your uh, build controller so let's see this in action so for that first I'm going to open the team foundation server cons administration console so let me open that All right, so it's just going to open the Team Foundation Server Administration Console. All right, so as you can see here, we have this particular application tier and all those options, so you can just minimize that. And there is an additional tools and components section. And this section has got uh, this particular XAML build configuration. So you can configure your build right from here. So as you can see, currently I don't have any kind of uh, build controller and it says like each build controller manage sets a build agent. So each build agent must be assigned to a build controller, but the controller does not have to be on the same host machine. So you have the leverage of that. So the first thing we need to do is to create a controller. So I'm going to hit this new controller and you can see that it brings me up a box and it says whether you want to give this uh, name for your default controller. Of course, let this be the default controller name, so I don't really care about it. But you can give some description if you have multiple controller. You may sometimes get messed up with that. So you can say that uh, the controller uh, running in TFS machine. Or maybe you can say uh, TFS server machine because this is my domain operating system at the same time I'm running this controller on the same AD at the same time same TFS server operating system which is completely not recommended in real-time scenario but still I'm doing it because I have only one machine so I'm just restricted to that particular stuff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say OK. So you don't really have to care about uh, any of these version control paths for the custom assemblies or if you want to specify the default to number uh, uh, number of enabled agents, of course, whatever agents you have, it will automatically default to that. So let this be here. And it also you can also specify the maximum number of agents this controller can support. And I'm going to say this build controller service is enabled so that uh, this will start as a service in our services.msc. And I'm going to hit OK. Uh, so our new controller has been created. And uh, it is stopped right now. So let's restart this. So if it doesn't work out, just try to restart this particular build service configuration. Uh, and you can see that uh, this particular default controller is now started. Right. So now our default controller is ready to go and we need to next create the new agent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this link and it will uh, show again the display name for this particular agent. So it is default agent, uh, which is nothing but uh, for the server. And you can add the description if you want to. And it will say which controller you want to run. So it has a controller already available, which is nothing but the default controller. And the computer name is server it is OK. And where you need to uh, see the working directory of that particular agent. So it is available here. So your system drive, your builds, and the build agent ID, and the build definition path. And it is saying the build agent service is enabled. So let it be. And I'm going to hit OK. So once I do that, it is automatically initializing and it automatically uh, set itself to that particular controller. So it is 
pretty much ready to go right now and you can also see its property it again brings me up the same stuff even in here in the controller right so this is how you can do a very simple configuration of your xaml build in team foundation server administration console so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day